Ever since Chris Avalon left Obsidian Entertainment, I've had my share of doubts about the company's ability to follow up the great RPG classics of the previous decade it helmed. So of my favorite games, Fallout New Vegas and Knights of the Old Republic 2, among others. Pillars of Eternity, even with Avalon working on it as a narrative designer, lacked a certain depth I'd come to expect from the studio, and while Obsidian's second isometric RPG, Tyranny, had a remarkably strong premise and opening, it drew to a close at the worst possible time. I mean, you don't tease out the final conflict between you and the biggest bad only to then pull the curtains. You just don't do that. So of course I'd been worried. What if yet another one of my favorite developers has gone off the deep end, has gotten extremely greedy, put an accent in business first and player experience second, third and last? Well... After playing through the introductory world, or if you'd rather the introductory settlement of Edgewater and the region around it, I'm happy to report my fears seem to have been greatly exaggerated, even misplaced. There is depth here and in all the right places. Let's just get the basics out of the way. I love the customization, but even more so, I love the look of the game. Even if on occasion, possibly the vegetation is thick enough that I sometimes lose track of the veritable mountains of corpses I, a space freelancer slash recently awakened colonist who spent 70 years in Krausleep, produce. The visuals of this first planet are stunning. None of that bleak brownness you might remember from the opening of New Vegas. Bright colors, gorgeous vistas, a sky that fills you with wonder and appreciation for the artistic direction Obsidian has taken with this one. If the look of the world draws from the brightest, most hopeful of science fiction, boy, does the story have a fun time of dipping into the most dystopian scenario I could think of. In short, cooperation is king. Here's the deal. The player character has spent 70 years in Krausleep aboard the Hope spaceship along the best and finest humanity has to offer. Over these 70 years, corporate culture has promulgated itself in extreme ways, like for example by poisoning the water supply of a small town in an attempt to extract the natural riches of the world, without a moment's thought for the suffering inflicted on all the innocents who live there. Uh, that actually happened. What? It did? Holy hell, that's awful. Uh, okay, the, the salt tuna thing... That didn't happen, though, did it? Nope, 100% in game. I'll thank our corporate overlords for that, at least. Raise the mouse. The outpost town of Edgewater is a salt tuna colony. It only produces salt tuna. Its citizens are on an exclusive diet of, you guessed it, salt tuna. There's also a plague in town. Wonder why that is. And the cure for that plague, according to the outpost administrator, Hard labor. Kind of like Stalinist Russia, come to think of it. What left the strongest impression on me, though, even more so than the bizarre ways in which corporate interests have taken center stage in human life, has to be the characters. Plenty of colorful ones, from the mad scientists attempting to make things right for all the colonists, Phineas Wells. Something wrong? Yes, well, not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? To read Thompson, the man in charge of the settlement with corporate interests at heart and a very particular view of people, even if he cares about them and often refers to everyone in Edgewater as one big family. I say he cares, but he obviously does so in his own very strange, somewhat twisted way. The leader of a renegade faction outside Edgewater, meanwhile, seems a kind and matronly figure, and has the greenest thumb in the universe, but her heart is filled with vitriol for the corporate way of life, so much so that she's willing to cause the death of everyone in the city, which is scary, needless to say. And don't even get me started on Ada, the ship AI, who an article headline I glimpsed somewhere on the internet called Outer Worlds Yes Man. I haven't read the article, but that's a great way to nail the essence of that character. Why? You are still here. My deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. 
This vessel is the registered property of Captain Alex Hawthorne. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? But you know who the most precious, adorable, bestest character is? Parvati. The engineer and our first companion. She is the best. Just the best. This shy engineer isn't liked by all her neighbours, hardly by anyone, but I, for one, appreciate everything she brings to the table and can't wait to get to know her better. I knew some of them before they left. I don't know anybody well. I mostly listen to them talk, get my head down. There was a boy named Thomas who used to follow me around, asking questions about the stuff I fixed. He was real sweet to me. Not any sort of dissident. Life's hard here. Especially for them. What Obsidian has managed is, they've given each of the big players in Edgewater, and a fair amount of the minor ones too, some memorable quirk. Or even a few, something that's hard to forget, harder yet to ignore. And that's more than Bethesda ever seems to do, at least in the last decade. Then of course, there's the choices. I've missed interesting, complex choices. First, the freedom to walk away from a quest you don't like is here, as in most other games. And I did that early on when a gravedigger, pardon, a junior in humor, let's deploy the corporate doublespeak already, asked me to collect the coin of the recently deceased's families on account that the graves are on corporation-owned land, and as such, they are rented. I refused, disgusted, and haven't looked back since, because my first playthrough is guided by my own moral compass. But the ideas I've got for characters after that one, boy, you are going to love them. But the big choice was between cutting the power of the city of Edgewater, or that of a small settlement of renegades who've left their workstations in search of a better life. It's not exactly a binary choice either since it's more than just about one faction or the other picking one over the other. It's about two different ways of life, between picking the status quo and being completely radical, or trying to find a middle way. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. You tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. Favorite side quest? Saving this runaway from a life among marauders, inspired by space western serials. And mostly from herself. How did I persuade her to go home? Simple enough, really. I reminded her there's a new episode of her favorite space marauding show, Waiting at Home. Wait, you're telling me he's got a copy of The Mass Marketeer? Why didn't you say so? I'll take my stuff and head on back, I suppose. Grace is going to be glaring knives at me, so I've got that to look forward to. Kids these days. Insufferable binges, am I right? At any rate, there's plenty to love about this one, and I'm really excited to play more of it. And you know what? From the sight of it, there's plenty to replay as well. And I rarely scratched the itch to replay most games. For this one, I just might. But not before I tell you all about whatever is ahead for me and my space of friends. Until then, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Bye. Only the most dashing champion of private enterprise ever to don a mask. Until I get my start, that is.